Hello and for person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the recent updates from planet Mars, specifically from the NASA's Ingenuity, Perseverance, and to some extent NASA's Insight Probe as well. Focusing on some of the recent achievements, some of the recent discoveries, and of course some of the more important updates. And here, I guess, let's start with this probe behind me, because it's going to be a pretty short story, and maybe a pretty sad one. NASA's Insight has officially ended its mission with this right here being the last image that the mission is going to be able to take. Because of the amount of dust that accumulated on the solar panels, the inside probe is unfortunately unable to collect any more energy and is ending its mission somewhat prematurely. Although in this case, it did make some groundbreaking discoveries about Mars during its few years when it was still operational. And specifically one of its most recent major discoveries was the biggest Mars quake we've ever heard. This Mars quake was thousands of times more powerful than any other one detected previously, although compared to planet Earth it was still somewhat insignificant. The magnitude here was about 4.7, which means that compared to Earth it was somewhat weak. But for Mars this is a significant discovery, because it once again confirms that there is something weird about Martian geology, and as you might have learned from one of the previous videos in the description, the recent discoveries do suggest that Mars is still quite active. As a matter of fact, it might actually resume its volcanic activity in the near future. Something that nobody expected up until now. And so the InSight probe was responsible for making a lot of geological discoveries about Mars in the last few years, essentially changing our understanding of this unusual planet. You can learn more about this in one of the previous videos in the description. But nevertheless, this is most likely the end of the mission. It just cannot function anymore and has to be retired. But the other missions, Perseverance and Ingenuity have been doing really well. As a matter of fact, despite all of the unusual problems both missions have experienced, they have been really persevering, as the name suggests. For example, the Perseverance probe has already collected 23 different samples from various regions, which is already more than half of all of the samples it's going to be collecting. And it's been slowly dropping these samples in various places near the region where it landed, to essentially be picked up by the next step of the mission in the next 10 years or so. Now here the main reason for these samples is to actually collect as much evidence as possible for what might have happened on Mars billions of years ago and potentially collect signs of maybe habitable conditions. Which is why so far the scientists have tried to focus on collecting a variety of different samples from a variety of different areas. But intriguingly enough, some of the preliminary analysis Conducted by the instruments known as Sherlock and Pixel, they are able to conduct the analysis in the UV and the X-ray light, started to reveal something really unusual about the location where this particular mission has landed. Now you might remember that the original reason for this landing, the Jezero Crater, was because it was always believed to be some kind of an ancient lake bed with potential rivers flowing into the lake itself. All of this was of course based on the topography and the overall shape of the area that kind of resembled what we see here on planet Earth. And so basically the visual evidence was definitely there. But the discoveries from this paper that you can find in the description, essentially based on the analysis of these samples, along with two other papers that are going to be published around the same time, kind of revealed almost the opposite. The preliminary analysis of various rocks in this area suggests that there is really very little evidence for the existence of ancient water. Or, if there was water, it was some kind of an ice mix, potentially with a lot of salty brine inside and essentially was more of a slush than water itself. Which is of course a really intriguing first implication or first discovery, but I was really wondering why the scientists thought so. Well, the geological analysis here was pretty clear. First of all, the visual analysis clearly indicated that most of the weathering around the rocks happened because of the Martian wind and not because of the ancient water with some effects from the radiation as well and from things like various chemical reactions present in the Martian atmosphere. On top of this, and this is the more important part, they have discovered minerals rich in what's known as olivine. Now on Earth, this is a mineral that we usually find really deep inside the planet, but it tends to get dissolved pretty quickly when there is liquid water present on the surface of the planet. Yet on Mars there is definitely a lot more olivine present in the minerals compared to anything we have here on planet Earth with a lot of the signs indicating that it wasn't really affected by a lot of water that might have been here. There were some effects, but not a lot. And this means that if there was any exposure, it might have been really brief. Or maybe the water was very different from your typical liquid water. It was basically what we usually refer to as brine, 
extremely salty water that does kind of act like slush when it's really, really cold. Very highly saturated in salts, which is why it couldn't dissolve the olivine. They've also discovered some other elements here, such as sulfates and perchlorates, which could have been left behind by brines that used to exist here. With all this currently indicating that if there was any water here, it was probably not how we originally imagined it. If this was an actual lake, typical lake, like on planet Earth, all of this would have been dissolved a long time ago. But if there was a lake that was frozen for most of its existence, containing a lot of briny water, could potentially explain these initial observations. Although these are still very initial observations in the initial analysis, so we don't really know what we're going to find out in the next few years. As a matter of fact, it could just be the location where Perseverance has so far collected the samples. Maybe just following a path that's not particularly rich in ancient water. And on top of this, even though there were some initial signs of potential discovery of interesting organic molecules, including molecules similar to benzene, the presence of olivine in these regions suggests that there was probably no life present here either, because olivine would probably not really be in the same shape as we found it. In other words, olivine, because of chemical reactions or because of various bacteria, generally changes pretty quickly. In this case, though, it didn't change. And so the presence of olivine in these regions at the moment sort of suggests that these regions were not really watery and not really filled with life either. But the mission also had some other really intriguing discoveries. In this case, an actual sound of what seems to be an extraterrestrial whirlwind. Or essentially, a miniature Martian tornado. And here, it ended up passing right above the probe itself, in the process allowing the scientists to measure everything from the pressure to the sound itself. Basically, the microphone picked up the sounds. And well, here's what it sort of sounded like. Now, the good thing about this particular whirlwind and the good thing for the future Martian missions is the fact that the pressure and the sound itself was extremely weak. The pressure here was only about 1% of what you would experience on Earth. So that means that, you know, all those scenes from the Martian where, you know, the tornado or the storm sort of causes the rocket to fall down, that's very, very unlikely to happen. The force of these whirlwinds on Mars is extremely weak. But you will definitely hear the sound. But only for like a second or so. This was moving at 25 miles per hour and was actually gone really, really fast. With the pressure drop only detectable by an extremely sensitive instrument. A human being would not feel it. So that's perseverance. But then we also had some major updates from the Ingenuity helicopter that basically still keeps going. As a matter of fact, as a joke, several scientists have already suggested that maybe this should be called perseverance because it just won't stop flying. This helicopter first flew on April 19th of 2021 and has now officially conducted 38 flights. And even though in March of 2022, NASA officially announced that it might extend the mission to September of 2022, as of December of 2022, it still keeps going. It's been flying for over 600 days, and it's been essentially setting new flight records on a different planet. And remember, the original mission was only supposed to last for 30 days, maybe maximum 5 flights. But it just won't stop. As a matter of fact, this mission has been so successful that NASA has now decided to propose what's known as Mars Sample Recovery Helicopter that's essentially going to serve as the main way to collect the samples dropped by the Perseverance probe, with at least two tiny helicopters essentially collecting the samples and then returning them to the rocket that's going to come back to planet Earth. Although all of this will probably not occur for at least 10 more years. In other words, we don't expect the samples to return until 2033. Nevertheless, back in April of 2022, during the 25th flight, it was able to set new records for the highest speed and the highest distance traveled, flying for 708 meters at the maximum speed of 5.5 meters per second. But then, as you might remember from some of the previous videos, it also started to experience a bit of a problem with the drop in total pressure because of the seasonal change on Mars. During Martian summer, the decrease in air density required the helicopter to start spinning its blades much faster. But also around the same time, on May 3rd of 2022, the communication with the helicopter unexpectedly failed. This was right after the 28th flight. And the engineers behind this mission now believe that it was very likely because of these changes in pressure 
but also because of the changes in the atmospheric dust that probably reduced the amount of energy the solar panels were generating, and when the battery reached a certain limit, the onboard computer reset the mission clock, which unfortunately lost the synchronization with the Perseverance rover. And this in effect caused the problems with the rover communication, but it was resolved pretty quickly. By turning off internal heaters and allowing some of the energy to be preserved inside, the communication was restored and the helicopter could fly again. Although in this case there was always a fear that every single day could be the ingenuity's last. The deficits in power persisted up until October, and so it was actually uncertain if the mission could maybe fail. But something else happened in June. Another part of the helicopter failed for unknown reasons. A part known as inclinometer. This is the part that's responsible for the orientation measurements at the start of each flight. But since we're talking about NASA engineers here, they basically found a workaround using a different unit known as IMU, Inertial Measurement Unit, that was able to do pretty much the same. And so here Flight 29 was actually the most nerve-wracking. It was the first flight without inclinometer and also in cold weather. But it definitely worked. And then for approximately two months the helicopter did nothing. It was basically just waiting for the weather to get better. With Flight 30 meant to test if the helicopter can still fly accurately after two months of inactivity. And it definitely did. Then during Flight 33 there was an unusual fabric stuck to the helicopter that at first was believed to be part of the helicopter itself. But eventually the team realized that it was actually something from the parachute responsible for landing the entire mission. And this actually fell off pretty quickly. Then Flight 34, even though it didn't look exciting, was exciting for a different reason. It involved a major update to the entire software, allowing the helicopter to now avoid various hazards and also, most importantly, use actual digital elevation maps to help it navigate by itself without the use of any manual commands. Or basically it gave the helicopter a lot more autonomy and allowed it to take off, land and fly much more safely. But also it provided a lot of new places where the helicopter could now land, even in more dangerous rocky areas. Then during Flight 35 it was able to reach a new height of 14 meters or 46 feet. This is the record so far. And for the next two flights, including the Flight 38, it essentially acted as a scout for the Perseverance rover. In essence, flying ahead of the rover, exploring the areas for potential sampling, but also relaying a lot of the mapping data as the helicopter explores and observes various areas. But I guess more importantly, it's been able to do so way way beyond what was expected, for 38 flights. It's functioned for over a year and a half and it seems to be still doing okay. And that's really the incredible part. Nobody has ever expected this thing to even fly, but it seems to be not just flying, but doing so much more than we ever hoped for. Which means that even next year I'm probably still going to be talking about this mission and the helicopter itself, potentially exploring some other new findings and new discoveries or new achievements from the entire Mars 2020 mission. But until future discoveries, well, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, check out some of the previous videos and more explorations of Mars and Mars discoveries in the videos in the description as well. Subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else. And maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the one full person t-shirt that actually also contains the Ingenuity helicopter in one of the designs. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.